Welcome everyone, welcome to The OC Show, episode 8 of season 2. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and today we'll be broadcasting live from a lot of different parts of the world. Uh, I'm in Montreal in Canada and I have a few of my guests here tonight uh, from different parts of the world. As I said, below me is Timote Xiala. Hey Timote. Hey guys, how's it going? Doing well, doing well. And we have two special guests with us tonight. Uh, first is uh, Denise Garcia, one of the like regular uh, guests here on the show. Hi, Denise. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me on again. Always welcome and always welcome. And we have the special guest for tonight, someone from uh, Player.net in the UK, Gavin. Hey, Gavin. How's it going, Truth? Uh, always fun. Uh, actually, it's uh, easier for me than for you because for you it's like I think like two a two thirty a.m. or something like this. Yeah, two thirty in the morning. It's uh... <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I know it's uh, not very easy for you guys in Europe to uh, to 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 catch up with the show live uh, because we have to do it uh, either myself in Montreal and Timothy in Taiwan. We have twelve hour difference, and sadly three a.m. end up in Europe at that time. So thank you guys for being uh, being there. There's gonna be a lot of stuff we're gonna discuss tonight. Uh, we expect the show to last for one hour, maybe it's gonna be like one or fifteen minutes. Uh, we have a lot of uh, stuff to give away, especially one of these t-shirts. Uh, actually, not this one because uh, that's uh, mine, but we have a, a proper one I that didn't uh, sweat in it. <laughs> 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 and we also gonna announce how you guys can win the GTX. Uh, I think that was the 760 uh, graphic cards. Oh, 960. Yeah, 960 graphic cards yeah. we have left from the Asus ROG camp in uh, Germany last month because we're in May now. So um, thank you guys. Timote, can you just remind everyone that is new to the show uh, what is the OC show about? Sure, so uh, the OC show basically with the episode you just saw before airs every two weeks on uh, our YouTube channel and the point of this live stream is to have you guys uh, participate to the show and ask us uh, any questions you might have about the news of the last two weeks. So if you guys have any questions about the different topics as we go through, just don't hesitate to comment on the stream chat. Don't forget, we are always monitoring the live chat. Uh, we're four people and we usually... Um I like to have some trolling going on and uh, first troll of the night will be AMD versus NVIDIA one of uh, one answer each so Gavon uh, <laughs> AMD or NVIDIA? NVIDIA <laughs> Okay, I won't ask why but that's it Tim? Uh, let's say NVIDIA as well <laughs> <laughs> Dennis? Uh, same, NVIDIA Okay, I will say AMD because I don't want to agree with you guys <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> potatoes. So, so that's that's gonna be the the start of the fight. So Timothy, what are we gonna see tonight? Um, um, quite a few topics. So the first off will be basically just saying to you guys that we are back in um, in our respective homes after um, a long trip in Europe. And then we're co gonna talk about the MSIOC Academy, which one uh, was an event that took place in the UK. We're going to talk about uh, new competitions at OC Esports. As you saw during the episode, there's quite a few new things uh, coming up, especially from uh, from partners Asus and uh, Gigabyte. And there's also um, some event coming up at Computex uh, called the World Tour. And that's an event uh, hosted by HDiBot. It's the third stop uh, right now. So this is going to be quite interesting as well. And I'm I think uh, with us we have tennis that might be passing by as a as a as an overclocker and as a having fun guy at the event. So it's gonna be quite cool. And uh, then we're gonna have something new, which is a debate, as you can see. And um, the debate for today will be debating about OC esports. It's been six months we're in on the platform, so having you with thoughts on it, the thoughts of the. Dennis and Gavin that are also overclocking and using the website for competitions and see how we could improve things eventually in the future or if it's totally trash and we should do something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that's not the right answer so far, so <laughs> I have no, a lot of no. explanation for that. So I was just poking the, the audience just like uh, Intel <laughs> versus AMD or something like that. <laughs> Good one. Um, before moving to the first topic, uh, I want to uh, let you guys introduce yourself. So, Dennis, we are your regular uh, host, uh, guest here, uh, but can you introduce a little bit more what you're doing in life and uh, and especially at Rhode Island? Sure. Um, 
I'm Dennis Garcia. I am the editor-in-chief of Hardware Asylum. It is an enthusiast-level hardware review website. We focus mostly on um, high-end motherboards, video cards, uh, cooling, overclocking, um, you know, that sort of stuff. We're kind of branching into full system builds, so I kind of partnered with uh, CyberPowerPC, so we do a lot from with them, and um, yeah, hoping to continue. Although one thing, and you, you have guys a have a podcast, right? Yeah, I do. I have a um, twice monthly podcast, um, amply named the Hardware Asylum Podcast. It uh, at the first of the month we have the main show, and that's around 30 to 45 minutes long. That one focuses mostly on stuff that happens on the website. We also have the extras, and those are the raw and uncut versions of the podcast. And we kind of anything goes in terms of subjects. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you uh, always for being here with us. It's always uh, a pleasure to uh, to have you as a guest, even if sometimes we call you like maybe 10, 15 minutes before the show starts. But it's always uh, so it's way like this that you, you do the best show. And mm -hmm. the second guest for uh, for this special episode of the UFC show is Gavin. Gavin from UK. Hey, man. How's it going? Always good. Always good. Uh, can you just present yourself uh, a bit more what you're doing? Because that's the first time you're uh, here in the UFC show. Yeah, no problem. My name's Gavin Bonshaw, and I'm the managing director slash editor of chief of Player, um, www.player.net. Um, we're a hardware slash technology review site. We review a broad range of technological products. Um, I mainly focus on computer hardware overclocking, um, but we've got a full team that deals with literally everything. Um, so it's a bit of a it's like an asylum. <laughs> so it's. Um, we also have a podcast as well. Um, we do a YouTube live show every week, um, but it never seems to start on time, which is quite a <laughs> pain yeah, in the that's backside. The <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the running gag that every time you, you do this kind of show, if you're alone, it's easier, or if you're a two person at the same location, it's very easy. You just set up everything and just go live when you're ready, and usually it's on time. Yeah. But when you need to have people on Skype like you guys, uh, you guys do on Player.net, um, it's always tricky, like the sound or something's not working or someone have the microphone not working or the camera is not working. Uh, yeah. I, I remember like the last episode I watched from you guys, your camera was not working at all. So you were just having your like uh, profile pictures on Skype. My webcam was actually, because um, I left my webcam because I was at the Overclock event in Cambridge and I took my main webcam down so um, Dagmar or Hyvisman could use it for the stream. And then obviously I left it, um, and it's gone missing. And it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. This is a picture of magic. Yeah. So thank you guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Very appreciate that. We love doing that with uh, with Timote. Um, Timote, I cue you to you for the first topic. You did twenty three thousand kilometers. Yeah, I did uh, twenty three thousand kilometers. Uh, each of you did a little bit more. I don't know if you've done the calculation, but uh, I didn't uh, check the... it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the three weeks you spent in Europe were quite uh, quite amazing. Uh, as much on the overclocking side than it was for food. Uh, I have to admit that we had so much food that it was just just not not acceptable. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we we went through uh, three different events. We had um, first the uh, World World Tour, the Gamers Assembly in uh, in France. So that was the biggest LAN party. There was like two thousand gamers, uh, like something like seventeen thousand visitors. And um, I think there we teach like a hundred people how to overclock. So it was pretty intense. Um, now we, we have to, to thank the guys from the French community, Kirkland and Clan OC that helped us with the workshops because it was uh, quite an amazing job to pull that off. And then, and then we, uh, we actually went back to Belgium uh, for uh, a day or something like this. And uh, we then drove uh, with YouTube into uh, the ROG camp in uh, Germany. So that was uh, the south of Germany. It was uh, actually quite similar to the event we attended after, uh, as it was uh, an event where there was a workshop to teach people how to uh, bench with liquid nitrogen for the almost or nearly first time. So in that, uh, in that German event, no one had done it in two. Only people had done some dry ice. So those guys had already a little bit of insulation experience. And um, so in that event, they had uh, the first day was basically just learn and uh, practice. And the second day was a fully fledged competition, eight uh, versus eight. It was very similar to what we see in MOA, for example, etc. 
And then the last event uh, was in the UK. Before that, of course, we stopped somewhere in France, grabbing some cheese on the way, some champagne, etc., etc. Um, <laughs> we arrived the in the UK. Best stuff you can ever have it when you're in France. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we arrived, in, <laughs> we arrived in the UK with like 15 extra kilos, something like this, and. Um, ended up um, basically at that MSI event that was called the MSI OC Academy. It was organized by the guys from Team GB and the main guy behind the event was uh, Hivisman, which we had on the show, I think, about a month ago now. And um, so that event went pretty well. Um, and we have with us uh, Gaffman that will be later on able to tell us a little bit more about um, how that went. So that was it for our European trip. Um, and it was pretty, pretty busy. And it's actually quite nice to be back in Taipei uh, things are much more calm, of course, a little bit less food, but sometimes it's not that bad. Well, <laughs> you still have cheese with you, so it's fine. Yeah, I, I smuggled uh, about three kilos of cheese in my luggage. I couldn't resist, sorry. <laughs> I promise it's all for my own consumption. <laughs> Did you have to declare uh, that? You, like, saying that uh, oh, it, kilos they didn't ask, out. actually. You know, uh, when you arrive in the US or in Canada, they hand you a paper where they ask you uh, to declare some uh, food and stuff you have. Well, in Taiwan, they only give you the immigration card, so there was only one card. There was no nothing to take for cheese. Sorry. <laughs> when I came back to Canada, I had like 4.8 kilograms of cheese, and I got the special checking by the customs, uh, asking why I had some uh, cheese and why I had some uh, like a confit, uh, confit duck leg, something like this, like something very truly French. Uh, they are actually in North America, they are very strict with that, but it's all fine. As long as you know the rules, uh, you know what you can yeah, bring and what you cannot bring so actually, so it's yeah, like two and everything went fine they, they just check the luggage and see okay it's uh, like the, 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 the cheese you can bring in so it's fine well yeah it's always a bit tricky to uh, to, to do that yeah. and i will never play with the customs uh, i swear it's, it's i don't want to, to risk anything with that well, if they if they ask usually you you're better off being honest and you just say you love cheese or whatever and they might just let you go cheese fiend <laughs> Oh, come on, I'm French. I love cheese. What can I do for that, and, man? Um, <laughs> yeah, you're born with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm born with the jeans for that. Um, Timothée, oh, we still have one of these T-shirts that we can give away. Yeah, how that's it. So we wanted to give it away. Uh, so we wanted to give this away during the show. I have the clean one here. So if people don't tr trust truth, I do have one left. Uh, so that's the one I would give away. The the size we have is M only. So um, if someone wins and is wearing XL, I would have to ask the guys that print the T-shirts. But I'd rather not. So uh, if you guys can just slim down, if you're if you don't fit in this one, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> so for the T-shirt, the way you can win it is very easy. Uh, we have the um, the raffle on the chat. So the only way to the way you can win is exclamation mark raffle and the correct answer right after that. Uh, uh, with a space in between, of course. And the question to win the t-shirt would be how many events uh, did uh, Truthman and myself attend when we were in Europe? Um, so I'm not too sure if uh, you guys paid attention, but I think I said it already three times. Or something. So you just have to count. I'll pay attention. So that's about it. If you want to participate, you have to type exclamation mark, raffle, and the right answer. Correct. Uh, as I'm like and typing on the live chat right now. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, running until the end of the show. And, uh, at the end, we'll just uh, draw the winner and let you know who, um, who won. So it's not that hard, I suppose. So if you guys want to participate. And uh, Dennis and Gaffin, you guys come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there is people that wait for the, <laughs> the special you, VJ we're going to give away, we're going to announce that at the end of the episodes uh, and explain how you, you have to do it. Have to do it. That's going to be a video so contest. Thing. So yeah, it was a pretty, um, pretty epic, pretty epic, uh, pretty epic uh, uh, April month, right? Perfect. Well, thank yeah, you pretty much. epic. Uh, so first event we attended was the MSIOC uh, Academy, uh, well, the last one actually, because we are not going to re-talk again about the, the World Tour, the ROG camp, because we already did that in the previous uh, live shows. And But the MSI Academy is the only one we haven't talked about yet. And this one was taking place in the UK. Kevin, you were one of the contestants. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. It was absolutely brilliant. It was... Um, just what the UK overclocking scene needed, really, because there's not really been. I think the last event was 2013, so there's a two-year 
difference between them, so it's it was really nice to and it was really appreciative to MSI um, and High Visman for um, organizing it. Really, it was fantastic. Yeah, so a lot of people uh, participated. There was uh, twenty about twenty overclockers that came from all over UK actually uh, the, to that event. Um, the way it was organized was you could uh, you could purchase a ticket uh, through Hivesman, and um, basically the ticket got you into a hotel for the three days of uh, three or four days of the event. You had a uh, you had the right to uh, assist to a workshop where you were uh, being taught about how to bench with. Some of the guys were actually pretty pretty cool thing to uh, to do. And um, once they had learned, they had a little practice on how to insulate, and then they were straight thrown into a competition. So that was quite uh, intense, I think, for some of the guys. Uh, you, Gavin, you already had done it in two before, so for you it was a little bit easier, right? Yeah, yeah, it was um, made my job a lot easier. Um, having used LN2 previously, yeah, it was pretty... I didn't participate in the workshop myself, but... Um, I could have yeah, you didn't have to, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so what I did like in this uh, in this event is that the workshop was very complete. Um, we, we did we did some workshop at the World Tour for the amateur, uh, so people that have no idea about overclocking, uh, the people here at the MSI uh, OC Academy in uh, in Cambridge uh, knew about overclocking, but that was like a workshop about how to use LN2 mainly, like how to uh, check for the system to react uh, when you're using Equinagent to cool down the computer and stuff like this. So it's actually um, it's actually interesting to to see uh, to go more in deep on the overclocking side, and that was actually pretty similar to the uh, Asus ROG Cam that we had the week before. Yeah, the only main difference I thought was that there was no uh, there was not that much practice time at that MSI event. But besides that, uh, I think it was uh, yeah it was very uh, the concept was kind of similar, and that uh, that's a concept I really like. Uh, I think that's the best way to get people started with it and to you cannot just uh, wake up in the morning and just buy a pot and do it so if you have someone teaching uh, or at least showing you uh, the minimum about how it works is is great and even in the competition uh, I don't know for you Gaffman but the, the guys that never had done it in two day there was always a few guys standing around and giving advices during the, comp the, the during the contest so it was not like oh yeah you know you're, you're my competitor so I'm not gonna help you out it was pretty Quite a friendly atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of camaraderie. Um, it was a fantastic show. From, I mean, you had Roman and Ian benching separately on the other side of the room, but everyone else, um, obviously, we didn't disturb them because they were pushing world records. But we were all having a laugh because it was in a pub as well, so that really helped. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we saw on the video uh, you having a breakfast beer. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes oh, shit's yeah. happen, you know. <laughs> oh but, yeah, especially when there's drink. Yeah, <laughs> but the, the the location was nice. Um, that was like a, the view was on on a park and so on. But us guys were like stuck inside and and benching, and, and you guys were actually benching quite hard. Uh, I love the way that was the one versus one. Yeah, facing each other, I think it's pretty cool. It's very different from. Having uh, eight versus eight, or ten versus ten, or even twenty versus twenty, and stuff like MOA, which is kind of like a hardcore to follow, even for people that know about the the sport, right? It's like it's really impossible, nearly, to to know what everyone is doing, and since you don't really see this, you cannot really see the screen of twenty people at the same time, you know. It's like a, it's a very. I think it's easier like this to to follow the competition. It's more, it's a faster paced kind of. It's less boring because uh, the the guys change more often, and um, yeah, you can. You, if you don't like one match, you just uh, go have a break, and you come back an hour later, and someone else benching, and it's completely different. It's different style too, uh, Gavin. What's your benching style, if I would say? Like, uh, do you go full pot and just full retard on the voltage, or you try to do I, step um, step? <laughs> I find I do go for a little bit of efficiency. Efficiency to start with. I've got like a. A set, a set way. Uh, I always go for the same sort of clock speed and same sort of voltage first, and then I tweak from there. But I'm, I'm quite balls to the walls when it comes to, um, like I, I, I will just, I'll keep, I'll control the pot. But um, as for voltage, I'll, I'll max it as much as I can. Um, especially in comp, when it's a competitive um, thing, when you're time limited, you've got to get the most you can. Um, 
if you kill the hardware, then obviously it's not very good. But um, <laughs> obviously within limits. Um, yeah, I, I like to use high voltage because <laughs> you, you know it's been cool. So. <laughs> That, yeah. that, that, that was fun to have like the actually the one versus one I stick to it I love it um, because you even if you don't have the best score of the day you can still uh, compete and win against one of the guys that is actually uh, uh, in front of you yeah exactly. especially if you have double elimination or something like that even if you're a loser from the first match you still have a chance somehow so <laughs> The, uh, somehow. Uh, uh, yeah, somehow. As you said, Gabon, there was uh, actually uh, Jan and uh, Roman benching on the side. They were uh, benching a four-way Titan X modded uh, SLI yeah. system. That was actually insane. They, they were benching like the on, on Sunday, the second day, they were benching like non-stop just for that. Um, I was doing a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, we had some. We all had some TV ideas about the uh, <laughs> some special fan that doesn't Today get cold just and doesn't the final, make the so noise when they get too cold and so on. But well, that, that was fun to have them like a, as a show off um, on the side. Of I would love to. Was it for you I would have loved to final, see them actually competing against some of you guys. Yeah, I was. I'll be honest. I was really disappointed that, especially Ian, wasn't competing because it would have been nice. You know, to test the skills against the number one overclocker in the world. So. Yeah, initially I thought they were here for that. Actually, uh, when I saw they were there for the lineup, I was like, "Oh, that's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be, uh, you know, maybe the winner of the amateur or the the beginner thing is going to be fighting against uh, one of the pro guys in the primers or something. That would have been interesting. Or even having also a match Roman versus Apex, you know, something like that. Yeah. That, that would be fun, Roman versus Apex. Oh, you know, it's just a featured match. Oh, no, it's like it doesn't. It's like it's not a declaration of war. They're in the same company, but it's just just for fun, you know, for the audience. This one, it was actually definitely would have been fun. Because uh, actually, you didn't manage to uh, to be in the in the final. The final is actually what we are seeing right now on the screen. That was uh, Obstruct Paradox the, uh, against uh, Nicole Nicole LP 1975, I think. And uh, how was it for you, even if you didn't manage to to end up in the final? It so was great, and um, I lost I both of my heats by one point, which was quite hard to see. You know why, why, how bad I felt. Um, match, it was, uh, on my right side, but it was great at the same time Peter. because, hey, Peter. in terms of competitors, um, and on my left side, you know, I was in the second year, was up against Top Dog, right. who's <laughs> from. I, I rate him higher than Eight Pack as an overclocker. I mean, I'm probably going to get flagged for that, but. <laughs> um, just to come within uh, one point of him and nearly beat him, that, yeah, to me that was the highlight of my so of the entire weekend for me. It was uh, fantastic. It was. Actually, you were I love the one v one format. It's uh, not uh, so, so much. Cl it's not like a cluster. The, the you know, every. Um, it's, it's more personal. Mob when people are watching, it's people can invest themselves personally. And in a couple of seconds to it after because there's the, one against the one, so you, finished, it was 5 .8, it's so. pick one. You know and what I mean? You did so. actually lose this How did you one? like the the choice of against the someone that, that was an uh, XTU in the second match? First time, if I'm right, uh, yeah, um, uh, it's I, I preferred. I, I liked it was XTU. <laughs> um, it was quite a challenger yeah, one because Cinebench, you know, you can run it. Right it's not as demanding the, the as XTU, so XTU had a, a an element and, uh, of surprise depending on the for fun from the King TV, and we are at the OC event uh, in Cambridge. I'm here with the first two contestants yeah. for the uh, one versus one best match. Uh, on my right, I have the top dog, and on my left, I have the uh, Actually, uh, Which one of you guys won? It's not the easiest benchmark to um to to, to get a high score within the first hour, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, especially... plus the scores are usually very close as well. Huh? Yeah. Not that many points to make a difference. Yeah, that like 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 I was saying, one point. You know, it is. Yeah. Uh, and uh... Dennis. Yeah. So, what do you think about this kind of uh, of event, like gathering people in a in a pub, making a one versus one thing? It, I kind of like it. I mean, I'm I'm actually a little jealous that you guys made it and I wasn't able to go. Um, yes, it's Rufman from Overclocking yeah, TV, with, and we are here in Cambridge um, at the Overclocking event organized the, by Team GB. I have with me two contestants that were in the like one versus be, one. Uh, I have on my right the Jumper ROG, 118. Hey, man. Not the Hi. ROG, the, the and I have on my left Overfriend. Hey. Hey, guys. That, that nightclub. So these two guys uh, compete, compete against each other. Actually, which one of you won? 
than me. Yeah. I mean, that one was kind of fun. It was a bit crowded, Congratulations. So it was um, and so we see people, finished by you because you won. So the end, you deserve really a little bit more love. One versus one. Um, <laughs> you know, after this. So actually, uh, you know, can you describe how was the, 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 the how you did know, compete in uh, this uh, competition so today in one versus one? It's kind of the same, except um, that, you know, you have... I start, started off these heats really, really well. Really good score. Got some 13, 28. Happy days. Here we go. Got it up. 13, 30. Best score I've done. That's all I've done. Best score I've done. In two runs. After that, 40 minutes. Nothing. You know, that's something that... It's nothing kind of at all just something different went kaput tried yeah, everything blow torch the try to heat, up, heat the pot up <laughs> and uh, the get it working Oops. again but nothing so let's went into the last five and minutes and start posting uh, score no more videos yeah, yeah we, like that. sometimes we have video we have the sound that's kicking I don't know why oh, well, so, uh, so many voices yeah you have to fly <laughs> the voices yeah I think I agree um, I agree also with what you said Dennis it's, uh, it's true it's um I, I like it that when it becomes one versus one near the end as well. Like when you have this uh, this kind of match thing, all of a sudden kicking kicking in. I think what uh, what will be interesting is that this kicks in a little bit earlier. Uh, <laughs> so when you have usually competitions, you have to wait for six hours before you have this happening. So it's like yeah. a, a little bit uh, long to wait. Well, really, the the important thing though is that people are being introduced to overclocking in a way that makes it interesting for other people to watch and get interested in it. And that's really the importance of it, or at least that's, that I see. Yeah. I agree. And since you're not going for records, you don't need eight hours to bench, right? Oh, no. I mean, you know, I was thinking when uh, Gavin was talking about his overclocking experience, you know, I come from single stage phase, so I have to maintain temperature against voltage. Um, you don't necessarily do that with LN2. so my experience with overclocking is a lot different than somebody else and you know wasn't so interesting back then yeah cool. um Chuff, do you have uh, anything else to add uh, to this topic except that i love the one versus one thing uh, especially uh you know i'm more on the commenting side rather than the uh, actually benching side uh commenting a one versus one match uh doing overclocking is actually much uh, much more fun to do rather than uh, actually uh, commenting on what's happening with 20 guy actually Dennis you remember the uh, the MSI MOA last year we had like yep. I think that was 19 overclockers to uh, comment on what they're using what kind of uh, hardware they were using and so on the first day was okay they yep. all used the same hardware but the second day they were all using different hardware and different one during the day that was just uh, I would say chaotic <laughs> but it was fun in a way yeah it was it was hard to keep track of. Even during the, the competition on the first day, it was difficult to follow everybody. So we ended up just kind of following the people that we had the cameras on and that we could see their screen. Um, and then there was a lot of people that, you know, did some really good stuff that we couldn't see. And that was the disappointing factor of it. But yeah, the second day, that was crazy. I mean, there was stuff everywhere. Yeah. So I had to get yeah, up and start walking around, talk to people. <laughs> Yeah. We, we do actually have some uh, comment from uh, Sophos, Sophos1990. Uh, do you guys remember one Dreamhack that was the, the best one versus one, in my opinion? Um, Timote, you were there, right? Yeah, uh, I was The one versus one, is, uh, one at Dreamhack that was with Asus or MSI? It was in uh, 2009, if I remember right. There was a, it was actually called the OC Showdown as well if I'm not mistaking. And it was, um, back at that time, it was, you had a Samsa, SF3D. So you had the, the older generation of overclocker, uh, which are- they all retired now? Them, <laughs> but they're not all retired, but most of them don't really bench actively anymore. And um, so those, uh, the, the setup was, uh, so one versus one on some kind of stage it was pretty cool because they had the massive screens on the side so you can actually see uh, the duplicate of the, the screens of the overclocker, which was pretty interesting for the crowd to follow. They had some little, uh, some little stairs thing where people could sit, you know, as an as a audience to, to watch the games. And uh, the way it was working, it was um, if you had 15 minutes to uh, pretty much set up. And then you had um, 30 minutes on one platform and 30 minutes on the other one. So, um, so there was a switch at some point in the match, and uh, this that's why that was the way they were doing it to have it as fair as possible with the with the hardware. And if you were killing anything, then you had to uh, you know, you simply were disqualified, and um, 
Yeah, I thought that was interesting as well. It, it makes it kind of like a different dynamic because it's like I don't think there's any sport like this where you swap place with the other guys. That would be actually hilarious in Formula One or something like this. <laughs> yeah, or WRC uh, or <laughs> biking. <laughs> oh. Like the, like the Tour de France, like, oh, you have to change your bike now. <laughs> uh, be yeah, like Le Mans. Yeah, yeah, it would be like Le Mans, yeah, if you have to relay the drivers or something. But uh, that was uh, that was interesting. Uh, it's true, um, like Sophos pointed out, that was an, uh, an interesting one versus one. It's true that uh, since that time, we until today, today we start to see a little bit more one versus one, even in the amateur competition on the on the World uh, World Series. But I mean, besides that, we we are not seeing that much of it. Like most of the the companies that did, for example, the Gigabyte Go C or even MSI MOA, Usually, are yeah, everyone versus everyone, which makes competitions that are very, very long stretched. And uh, the more overclockers you have, like Dennis, you said, the harder it is to actually follow what's going on because it's just too many of them. And I think MOA is like there's one score every two minutes. So, well, by the time you've talked about one score, there's already two others that are that came out. So, yeah, it's it's really really hard to to see what's going on, well, especially yeah, anyway. after twelve hours nonstop. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. you have no more voice. <laughs> and you also have to consider that you know the people don't move around too much, so there's not a lot of action to see unless you can see a screen or something like that. Yeah, there's no explosion or anything like that. We we yeah, try with no smoke, but it doesn't really help at some point. <laughs> yeah, and no pit stops, so you can't time it to see how fast they swap out a CPU pot or something like that. True. That True. might actually I, be a good challenge. Yeah, actually, talking about swapping at that uh, MSI event, they were. Uh, I think at the beginning they had planned to swap the parts on the system and stuff, but they ended up having some uh, uh, some unfortunate uh, misdelivery by uh, I think UPS or whoever that was that fucked up, and they didn't deliver the RAM for the competition on time. So it ended up they were limited in the amount of systems, so they could not do the swapping. So the guys were benching on already mounted, insulated, and semi-frozen systems. So, which I think uh, made it very a lot faster for the pace, but maybe some, you know, at some point sometimes it's nice to unmount, especially if the system has been benched for three or four hours. Um, um, I think I don't know, Gaff, and what you thought about that. That was it easier to have just already prepped system, or you would have to prefer mounting the whole thing yourself? Well, I had to, um, other than the installation, um, but obviously I think. I think for the people that weren't as proficient and they haven't as they haven't done it as much, I think it was a lot easier for them if that makes sense. Um, some that are not as experienced with with insulation and mount, but I think that helped it because obviously when I think it was UPS that lost the yeah I think the, so the crate, yeah. I think it was about ten thousand pounds worth of um, equipment it in was that a crate. Huge thing. It was not and it was not a small box either, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it was ridiculous, but I think that, I think it helped some people, um, obviously it helped that some of us had some prep time, because I, yeah. I, when, I, when I bench, I like to make, I, I don't like to bench on stuff that people have, especially people mount, so I like to mount it myself, so I know that it's my, maybe I'm just being too much of a perfectionist, but. Oh, no, I, I think I see what you mean, you know, like knowing you put the contact right and, you know, even like how you spray the spread degrees or just verifying that the probe is properly put in, you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. if I did it, if I do it personally, then there's no excuses. You know, if someone else does it and it's not in properly or then that's time out of the competition for me to, to sort it. And so it's, I think it's better to do it yourself, but I can see yeah. why it's easier for other people. And I appreciate that. I think it's great. I think it's brilliant. Well, right. well I think we all uh, love this kind of one, the one versus one. I hope we're going to see some of the, this kind of concept back uh, at the uh, World Tour Asia, Timothy. Yeah, well, we'll see how that, uh, how that works, uh, what we can do for now. There's no plan to do uh, really one versus one. Uh, but it might just, like uh, we said, turn into one eventually at some point. So We'll see if people know. want to do it. Maybe why not? Um, yeah. Don't forget, guys. Should we remind people about the rough? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. If you guys want to win one of these t-shirts, not this one, uh, a proper the clean, clean one, one, the one yeah. that uh, Timothy <laughs> is having right now, you can just go on the Twitch live chat and type uh, exclamation mark waffle and the right answer to this question. How many events Xiala and myself attended during the European uh, road trip uh, in April? So how many overtaking events did we attend? And you enter that and you can win one of these t-shirts at the end of the show. So <laughs> next topic, Timothy, what's, uh, what's the next one? Uh, new competition on those esports. Yeah, a lot of them actually. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. I don't think I don't know if it's just before Computex that everyone's waking up and oh yeah, we need to to want to bench or. Uh, I think it's a bit of everything. You know, it's uh, if you remember before we went to Europe. So uh, February was a super intense month as well. Like there was a huge amount of competitions at that time, and it seems like uh, May is going to be one of those months again. Um, so uh, you have because um, you have the traditional competitions now. You have a so you have the Rookie Rumble, you have the Novice Nidmo. So those are uh, series organized by Storybot on the LC Sport platform. But you also have the um, the Challenger series, which is starting again. So that's the round two that is starting. And uh, as you know, the Challenger series, you basically have divisions for different types of hardware, which makes uh, it's interesting for guys that don't want to compete. Uh, in rankings uh, against some other guys and also have a ranking that is seasonal based so they can evaluate their performance actually right in this season instead of uh, comparing to people that are benching since 15 years on the butt. Um, so other competitions that we have are the Gigabyte um, X99 Champion Challenge which is a competition that uh, started on May 1st. So this one is uh, basically open to every X99 uh, motherboard by uh, Gigabyte, so everyone that has an X99 board can participate. And you have uh, different um, different stages, some are for 6 cores, some for 8 cores, and then you have a, so an interestingly limited uh, 3 stages for 3D, which are limited to GT730. If I'm not so, so that's a very low-end uh, graphic card? Uh, yeah, it's a very well, very low end. It's a low end graphic card. The advantage is that it's uh, not that expensive. I haven't actually checked in uh, the computer market here how much it costs, but uh, it's something like uh, that. Every if you don't have it, everyone can get it. Not like a, like a, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can get them online for about sixty dollars US, or at the stores yeah. for hundred dollars US. So it's still quite affordable and. Uh, I'm not too sure. I haven't seen anything regarding modding on this card, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see some things because I doubt people are going to just run it like this. Uh, so far, there's a, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's, there's going to be some weird modifications going on. Uh, so far in the six stage, there's the one closing in four days. Uh, they have to run XTU yeah, at four gigahertz. Yeah. yeah, the stage is finishing earlier, so guys that participate, pay attention to the deadlines. <laughs> Don't miss a deadline, it's always a, a pity if you actually miss one. Um, Dennis, so, do you plan to participate in this one? Because uh, I remember you've been a fan of Gigabyte competitions in the past. I am a fan of Gigabyte competitions, and I seem to always win something. Not the big prize, though, unfortunately. Well, um, give it is, right? The lucky yeah, I need, I need to try. Um, the problem is, I um, May is a very busy month for me. I have a lot of reviews to push out right before Computex. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty much in Computex mode right now, a month before it happens. But there is a team member on Team Ninja Lane that is competing. And I'm not sure what he's done, but I think he's just done like one or two stages or something like that. How do you and you just oh, check it. Good luck to him. Actually, that's funny oh, to that see it? that uh, the, the first stage is XU at 4 gigahertz, so everyone is just using uh, all-in-one cooling, and, and no one is using there's an no N2. Yeah, no there's one. no need for Actually, there's even a lucky draw for the three, uh, drawn around the three worst ranked guys, I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if I remember right from the, from the rules. So that's, you know, it's, I mean, everyone can try. You don't need to necessarily run your, your whole X99 system on the code to eventually win something. <laughs> That would be fun. Uh, what are the other competitions that we have? Uh, so other competitions that we have, um, we have uh, the Asus uh, OC Showdown. ROG so OC Showdown. ROG, ROG, ROG Showdown. Two. 
Round two, so we had a run, run one earlier this year, round two. Uh, so talking about the extreme one, because um, there's also the Formula One, which is for uh, more air cooling and, uh, and water cooling. Uh, the, so the extreme one is uh, started, um, I think it's already started, and yeah. it's going to run for a few more weeks now. And uh, in this one, uh, well, the limitations are a little bit different. It's a bit more open to a slightly broader selection of hardware. Um, even though you can for sure know that if you want to be in the top, uh, then you need to run technically X99 as well. Um, and for the and for this competition, there's quite a quite a lot of prizes, which is uh, an interesting uh, fact to point out. If you are looking for uh, specific uh, hardware things to win, uh, you can win some memory, you can win some LN2 pots even. There's some CPU, uh, there's some power supplies, and of course motherboard and graphics cards. And uh, some money, a little bit less than for the Gigabyte one. The Gigabyte one has 2,800 uh, US dollar of cash price pool, and like this one has 1,000. But you know, it's always cool if you can pay back a little bit of your LN2. Some of the uh, expenses that uh, you don't have to get out of from your own pocket. Uh, these competitions have the ROC OC Shodan Extreme Series Round 2 have 14 days left. Uh, so far, Dan Cup is destroying everyone, followed by uh, Strat from France and then Lul from France also. So actually, uh, Dan Cup is having like the first, uh, the first uh, place in the three stages. That will uh, be fun to see how that's uh, gonna last for the next 14 days. Um, actually, yeah. there's one point truth also before, uh, just before, is that. Um, that uh, it's always worth participating in those competitions if you have the hardware because there's always lucky draw among the people that participate in all stages. So, and that's um, that's true for almost all the competitions on OC that's Sport. That's true for I... all of them. So usually, uh, even uh, like uh, I, I often read uh, like I read some people that say like, oh yeah, I don't, I, I have the gear, but there's no way I'm gonna push that on the LN2. I don't have the budget, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, you know, you can do your best with uh, air and water cooling or as much as you can, and you you might just get a, you know, you might just win something that will help you get started with LN2 for the next time. You know. <laughs> Indeed. No, sorry, I was. Um, it's it's getting lazy. <laughs> uh, <Aww. laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Gavon, do you plan to participate in the uh, Gigabyte one or the Asus one? Um, no. Um, <laughs> I'm quite an MSI fanboy sometimes. Um, no, I am. I am thinking about. Com just need to go and um, acquire myself a motherboard, um, and I'm I'm ready to go. Really, um, I might have to do some more binning on the um, on the chips, but who knows. It'll be a to see, in my opinion. Um, I'm not going to enter the um, the um, Asus one. Um, I had the Rampage Extreme, um, but I just didn't like it. <laughs> this wasn't my sort of boards. I don't. I don't. I like to be quite efficient with my hardware because otherwise it just starts to pile up and I absolutely can see everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, well, I, will. I won't show so you, you my Yeah. <laughs> Did you participate in the MOA? Um, uh, the, um, the, what was Extreme it? The name? Extreme Series Extreme something. Series. Yeah. yeah, Extreme Master Series. I didn't. <laughs> so, I mean, what uh, kind of fanboy are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know. It's, uh, it's, it, it's mainly a time issue. It's um, yeah, I'm kidding. the the schedules of LM2 supply in, in this country is you know you either have to pay a stupid amount to get delivered on the day you want it. Or they'll do a schedule where they're up your area, and the and the my guys at Mansfield Cryogenics will, will stop off at yours and obviously oh, yeah. dump it off. So you've got to you've got to arrange it in advance, at like six weeks in advance. So yeah. it, it can very be different. troublesome. Yeah, very different different from Taipei where you order it just like pizza. Yeah, exactly. It's, oh, um, a tank of in two, please. Okay. <laughs> I'll be well, there in two minutes. <laughs> An industrial city, whereas you know you, that's not the same way around the world. So, yeah, for sure, that's uh, that's something indeed to to take into account. That's also uh, why one thing uh, I think we usually try to to tell to uh, vendors that wants to uh, organize competitions, like to tell it in advance, you know, so we can announce the contest like two weeks or three weeks before. Already makes quite a big difference for for the guys to prepare because it's not really that easy for everyone 
uh, to get uh, LM2 supplied or get the right hardware in time or whatever else is needed for the competition. Exactly. Actually, um, yes, there's some people talking on the on the live chat on Twitch. Thank you guys for being here. I know there's uh, some people that it's like 4 a.m., uh, especially for Rebur in Belgium. And there were people asking you, Gav, like, hey, is it really 3 a.m. for you? Yes, it is. And, uh, it is. <laughs> and uh, we have some... It doesn't hours. look like it, but it is. I <laughs> know, oh, it's... Um... I had it to, looks I like it's early up. morning or something. <laughs> I actually went to bed at five o'clock and woke up about half ten just to be on the show tonight. It's I'm gonna have to sort of reboot my sleeping pattern now because I, I did watch the um, the fight last night as well, so it made it easier. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for being here this time for sure. It's not yeah, that no easy. No problem. It's a pleasure. And thanks to all the viewers that are in Europe to uh, other tune in at these times. Don't forget, if you want to win one of these t-shirts, you can go on the live chat and type uh, exclamation mark, raffle, and answer the questions. How many even did uh, Timothy and myself attend during our last trip into Europe in April? Um, one last competition we want to talk about is the old school is best school. Yeah, so that's the competition for all the guys that have old stuff at home. Um, it's the competition to get the dust off your old mus uh, motherboards that are somewhere uh, in the closet, usually in the box. And um, so it's open to uh, mostly old school stuff. So I think that's the motherboard like you have to have at home, like the, was it the P, P, I have a P4, P800 something. I have it for like uh, uh, almost two and a half months now. Uh, maybe yeah, I so or like it. this, I welcome. <laughs> yeah, they're all welcome, but uh, mine is taking the dust because, uh, as you know, I'm actually uh, focusing on doing much more of this kind of life rather than uh, benching lately. So sadly, that will probably stay uh, on the shelf. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can see it. It's right there, this one. And there's a GeForce uh, 4MX um, 440, I think, on it. Well, I'm, I, I don't think I will have the time to participate, but... Uh, depending, because there's some guy that used to uh, be at Tech Sweden that is now in Montreal for for a few months, five months. So maybe we just do like a old school benching stuff uh, weekend, maybe. Maybe that yeah, would be the occasion to reboot uh, this whole hardware. Uh, yeah. Dennis, yeah. I know you have like yeah. an old Abit motherboard. Do you plan to use this one? Um, no, actually, the Abit one went up in smoke. Um, strangely enough, no, I um, oh. I, have, I know it's sad. It's sad. I have one of the totally awesome DFI Land Party nine three nine motherboards that with the Enforce chip set on it. It was one of the first ones that started to do SLI. You know, you had the the jumpers on the board. You had to switch. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find my processor. So, but those nine three nine processors are really weird when it came to LN two, but they work well on face. So. I, I remember the time at the uh, 939 circuit. I uh, was still uh, using uh, Epox at the time. Uh, that, that brand doesn't exist anymore. They changed the name to oh. Supox, uh, and that was actually uh, the worst naming ever. Supox. <laughs> Supox. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, that uh, that was yeah. actually... Uh, I, I, I like this kind of combination. And actually, Timote, uh, can you confirm that this come from the community itself? Yeah, actually, it's um, so some guys on the forum started a thread like, hey, it would be cool, you know, back in the days, there was uh, those competitions for all the hardware already, you know, and uh, it would be cool to have them back. And so I think um, it just started like this. And then uh, I think Massman just went in and say, hey, you, you know, if you want to do it, no problem, just make a plan, you know, it's, you have to have a plan with stages and everything. And then we just put it up and um, as simple as that. So some, uh, some of the guys organize themselves. Uh, they they pick the different stages and and it, and it ends up right now as being a series. So there's uh, several of them every year, and eventually, why not a, a king of the old school, the space school at the end of the year? So that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> it's uh it's uh, it's fun to see some of the uh, old stuff coming back on. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, as yeah, some yeah. people would say, like the... yeah, it was always better in the past. Uh, it's not exactly true. It was fun. It was different. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> and maybe maybe Kingpin is seeing an increase in the order of his uh, chipset parts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he's still selling them though. Oh, I don't know if he sells them, but I saw last time I went, he still has some on the shelf. There's <laughs> one or two just like this, just to for the selection. 
<laughs> for for the posterity and the records and everything. So I remember we used uh, even uh, Red Bull cans. You know, you can use anything on this on the chip. It doesn't really need to have great contact. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to have stuff. Uh, be, beside all the commissions from the community and the uh, the partners like the Gigabyte, the uh, the Asus one, um, good to remind that all the novices that they still have the novice nimbles, they still have 33 days to compete. Uh, that's the uh, the step after the rookie rumble, so they have to join one of the team and try to compete. So far, uh, Cocotland team is uh, destroying the ranking. Uh, they have only yeah, the stage in five. Yeah, because they actually they actually were second uh, when we shot the episode, if I even correct. Yep. So oh, it's a, it's a fierce battle between Cocotland team from France and ROC from uh, Holland, if I'm right, Netherlands. Yeah, both both uh, both teams have massive uh, threads on the forum already about that. So, <laughs> so the, their top guys are helping their their novices to to smash the other team. So <laughs> there's there's already some good uh, some good competition in that one. And uh, before going to the novice numbers, you can always participate in the Rookie Rumble. That's the 17th edition of the Rookie Rumble. Um, this one is closed. Um, Timothy, the, the 18th one is going to start soon, maybe? Yeah, next week. <laughs> There's always one week of cool-off in between, so uh, actually, yeah, next week it should start. Actually, it, it it closed uh, it closed not that long ago, like just a few days ago. There was yeah, three hundred and fifty four overclockers in that commission. That's just insane. So that's new people that are on the on the site for less than three months. It's insane. Yeah, not everyone gets hooked up, but many of them are getting to try the other benchmarks to enter the the competition and win something. So eventually. Um, some of them move on to uh, another symbol and then like we saw in France, they actually start to attend events. So that's pretty awesome. And that's what we want, you know, in the end, we want people that do more and more LN2 benching for fun and not just people that stay on air forever. So that's great. Let's great say way to keep pushing it. Exactly. <laughs> So I think that's uh, we, we made like the, the complete roundup of all the competitions going on at the moment. There's a lot of them. Um, good to note, although that there's the round, the new round of all the uh, challenger series that started the round two. Uh, the round one was uh, quite massive. We're gonna discuss a little bit more about that in uh, after the next topic. And the next topic is the Edge World Tour 2015 Asia at Computex. I have no idea about this event. Tell me about it, Jeff. <laughs> so <laughs> we we did the first uh, HWB World Tour. Actually, you can see like the 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 stuff like in the background uh, in Montreal. That was the North America uh, event. Then we went to Europe last month. Actually, like uh, less than a month ago, we were in Europe for the HWB uh, World Tour Europe at the Gamers Assembly. Biggest land party in France was awesome, huge success. A lot of people attended there. Uh, we had uh, over a hundred uh, amateur competing, and there was like uh, more than nineteen overclockers um, uh, there. And the Asia one gonna be like the, like the the the, the final one, official one for this year, um, with uh, mostly pro overclockers and extreme overclockers attending. Uh, that's gonna be after the Computex on June uh, seven, eight. And nine or six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, eight. Six, Correct. seven, and eight. Right, and uh, that will be held in the Maker Bar in uh, Taipei, and it that is. was the same location that uh, there was the Edgerbot OC gathering last year. Yeah, so uh, last year the, that that OC gathering you're talking about is actually the the founding event of the whole World Tour, if you if you want. Because um, uh, we did that event last year was for the 10 years of HWBot. So it was some kind of celebration event, like as a friendly uh, gathering bench party. And uh, so this year, the, the World Tour is here in Taipei. And I think um, there's actually no better time in, in Taiwan to do an event like this because that's the time where all the guys, or so all the top guys and guys really active at a competitive level are, are here for the trade show. They are here for either benching on vendor booths, they are here for demonstrations, they are here to just walk around the alleys or sometimes purchase some hardware. You know, there's some pretty unique places here where you can purchase all sorts of probes and meters and different parts you may need for your overclocking. So a lot of people come to Taipei as a, as a pilgrimage of the overclocking thing. Um, 
every June. And uh, so we're expecting, uh, we have 30 seats for people to bench. Uh, we're expecting to have a similar amount um, um, than last year to, um, of overclockers participating to the event. So pretty much all the 30 seats will be taken. Um, I think already one third of an hour uh, gone, probably a little bit more now, I haven't checked. And um, basically what we propose at the event is uh, very similar to what we propose at the other World Tour stops. So you have uh, three days of freestyle benching, you come with your gear, you bench whatever you want. Um, LM2 supplied power as much as there is. And um, then for the two other things, uh, if you remember from the other World Tour, we had always an amateur part with a workshop and a competition. Well, this time, since it's not on a public event, uh, there's not going to be an amateur uh, workshop. But if there, there are amateurs in Taipei or in Asia that would like to come and learn about OC, of course, there's no problem uh, for us you know, to, to mount a system and to, uh, to teach them how to, to bench. That's not really an issue. Um, but there will be a competition like the like the World Series for the guys that will be participating, and there will be also uh, something called the ROG OC Showdown area, which we haven't yet announced too much about the details of how this is going to work. Uh, but basically, both would be uh, quite competitive, and there would be uh, cash and the hardware to win for those. So. That's it's actually uh, be interesting. And we interesting to, to say the least. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, like you said, the, all the top guys will be here, so it will be um, for for those guys, and even for the press attending, it's the occasion to to talk to the to the people behind the scenes that have very close tie to the industry, and, uh, and also you know that are the most experienced on the hardware that took part in all those uh, prestigious competitions around the the years. So it's always um, it's a it's a good networking web event as well as a friendly gathering as well as a competitive. Event. I can't wait to uh, I can't wait to start. Uh, actually, you are part of the organization, right? Uh, there's a lot of partners this uh, for this for this event, like ASUS, the ROG, IPX, Sonic, Intel. Um, uh, th what's gonna help uh, in the in the event to have these kind of partners uh, jumping in? Well, for sure, you know, to run events like this, you you need the partners for the very simple reason that uh, having a venue, purchasing LN2 in quantities like we are going to have. Uh, Arranging extra power, you know, you know, we need an extra diesel generator that is going to provide 220 volts here in Taipei because there's only 110 here, and the venue is quite limited in the amps. I remember last year we had some hot cables, and we don't want this this year. So we're going to have a generator set up to provide uh, up to I think 75 uh, kilowatts of power. Um, so it's all that kind of stuff you need to arrange, you know, and uh, plus. There's a bit of marketing to do as well, you know, printing all the marketing materials, all this kind of things. And we have drinks and snacks for the overclockers attending as well as for the press. So um, it takes a little bit of money. So for sure, the partners are here for, for that. But they're also here to, um, to you know, to, um, to support the community into, into that kind of event. So the, the point is for them to not just throw money at something and hope things are going to be well, you know. Um, ASUS uh, is uh, for sure going to be uh, very implicated with this event. They will have some of uh, the guys, you know, Elmore that is working now. The ASUS at the HQ is going to be there, of course, you know, to assist the guys and help troubleshoot. So it's really going to be also some engineering experience, I think, for some of the guys that uh, I've never took part to that kind of event. If you remember last year already, um, TL, which is an overclocker that also works at the ASUS HQ, was here to help the guys to mod their cards, you know, so that kind of thing is always uh, very appreciated and it's something that has a absolutely, uh, it has a unbelievable value for people attending that kind of event. So for sure the support is very necessary. Also, if um, it's an event, you know, where you have to fly in, uh, there's no roads leading to Taipei yet. And um, well, the only, the only way you can come with to a free benching event like this is to bring all your gear with you. You know, we are talking about power supplies that weigh uh, nearly six, seven kilos each. Uh, you know, you, you come with your motherboard, you come with all your gear. Maybe the your CPU, CPU board, the GPU board, you that stuff is heavy. You have to purchase torches when you arrive, maybe your heat guns, et cetera, et cetera. So you very quickly have 30 kilos of benching gear. And then you have, you know, one t-shirt left and hope to get three t-shirts on the way. Um, so. <laughs> So you know, it's like um, so. Without the the the, the sponsors, it would be really hard also as well to to be able to provide on loan hardware for the participants. So for example, we have C Sonic that is providing I think 26 power supplies uh, on loan for participants. So the guys 
don't need to bring their PSUs. You know, there's PSUs provided at the event. Of course, trust the right per se. We cannot provide everything for everybody, but there's also motherboards available. There are some uh, top-end graphics cards that uh, Asus provides. And there's also uh, memory kits from HyperX as well as SSDs and uh, USB keys and all that kind of stuff. So, so anyone that uh, buy a ticket to go there can just uh, request some of the hardware that is uh, on the loan, yeah. right? Pretty right. much if you take your ticket right now and you're in time, you can actually just come with your CPU and your CPU pods. Technically, all the rest you can loan in there. And that might be the occasion for you to try some X99 motherboards uh, by Asus or to try the the P1200 uh, watt power supply by Seasonic or to try some uh, DDR4, what is it, uh, 30, I think it's some 3400 kits. Well, some very good kits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm say, we have a, really good yeah, yeah, so we have a box full here. We have, uh, I think, 20, 20 something kits. So same again. First people got their ticket. Yep. That was first, first arrive, first serve. So guys, if you didn't yeah. take your ticket yet and you're going to Computex, I want to go bench there. Go on the hwbot.org and uh, find the link there. You can uh, go on the Eventbrite page to uh, get your tickets. Uh, if you cannot attend, there is no worry, no worry for that. Uh, we will actually stream live everything, uh, yeah. especially uh, myself and special guest Lee Goft. I'm not sure it's confirmed yet. Maybe it is, maybe it is not. Who knows? Um, we are planning some uh, good stuff uh, for, for you guys, uh, some giveaway and some stuff. Um, that, that will be like the complete show for the, uh, for, the, for the weekend. So don't forget, if you uh, like this kind of stuff, you can subscribe to the Twitch channel or even on our YouTube channels uh, if you're watching this one, the replay on YouTube. Um, Dennis, you're going to Computex. Uh, are you going to pass by the event, maybe benching? Um, I will definitely be at the event, um, at least for one of the three days. I told Albert that I was um, going to show him how to overclock a classified card. I guess he's never really done that on a video card before. So we will probably pair up and uh, bench for a little bit, hopefully get some scores and, uh, you know, have fun in the process. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Um, Gavin, you, you're not attending Computech this year. Not this year, unfortunately, no. Probably next year, um, but this year, um, it's more of a time constraint for me. I've got so much to do, and yeah, I, I had to put. I had to put according to the pile of hardware you have in your in in your background, you still have a lot of tests that are not uh, yet finished. I guess that's only one section. I've got an entire. <laughs> it's all over here as well. It's chaos, <laughs> organized chaos. <laughs> As long yes. as it's organized, it's fine. As long <laughs> exactly. as you can find your stuff, it's good. Yes, I have this kit under the third pile there. Uh, that I remember there's some uh, CPU right next to it. It's a very good one. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I've got, yeah, I've got CPUs all over the desk and memory and... Oh, well, yes. Well, too bad you cannot attend the, the SWBot World Tour uh, Asia at Computex this year, but um, what do you think uh, if there is like a, the one in the in UK, maybe? Oh, I'd, to, I'd be there. Um, 100. I, I want, like you mentioned before about the, you know, the OC sports tournaments, like with Cow Cotland, and they're all organizing it together, and uh, they're, all, they're all going at it full pace as, as, a, as a group. The UK does, I mean, obviously Team MLG, um, Midlife Gamers, um, which is my team, Obscure Paradox's team in the chat, and Mad Dutch Dude's team as well. So, I mean, hopefully we can maybe sort something out like that and push, but Top Dog, who is a member of Team MLG, is actually number one at the moment in the world. So. That's true, yeah. So we've got, we've got the top guy, it's just getting everyone else arranged <laughs> so we can push even far, even further so yeah we need to, and an event like that would help you know it gets people involved yeah yeah, yeah. there's yeah, actually sure people, there's, social. yeah there's some people from the team on the on the twitch side say shout out to us so uh, shout out to the mad dutch dude xoc and obscure paradox and uh guys rent a bus and come to the europe stop <laughs> it's not that far. Share actually, the, uh, share the bench house with the French guys. <laughs> you can it's take the good. you can take the uh, Eurostar to go down the uh, like down the the the, yep. the the sea, and you can have some very strong accents there. 
And uh, when we took the, the train back with Timothy and, and Peter, we had uh, like the, not, not the driver of the train, but the guy was uh, such a strong French speaking accent that was, oh my God, we, we loved so hard for like the, the, the first 15 minutes of the train. That was just perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, it's already uh, an hour in the show, and uh, I think we should uh, um, go on the few debates, uh, maybe like a 10, yep. 15 minutes maximum of the debates. Um, Asia-built world tour, Asia stop at Computex, that's going to be in... Um, in Taipei, Taiwan. If you guys want to join, go take your ticket now because there's already like one third of them that were sold like at the beginning of the week. Uh, so get your ticket there. You can even get some loan hardware. That's from June 6th to June 8th. That's gonna be at the Maker Bar in Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, nice locations. Everything is uh, the, the LN2 gonna be provided and so on. Uh, we used up to 2200 or 2300 liters at the Europe stop. Um, we expect to. Uh, have at least that at the Asia stop uh, don't forget uh, go get your tickets or if you cannot attend and be in Taiwan at that time subscribe to overclocking TV twitch channel or even on uh, YouTube uh, overclocking TV uh, channel so you can have all the latest informations about this uh, special awesome event well yeah, so let's get for the debates for the debate. yeah okay. let's sports. get ready to fight <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, OC Esports, that's the platform for the competitive um, overclocking. So uh, yeah, the point of the debate first is uh, for having you guys in the, on the chat and also guests here, Dennis and Gavin, to basically tell us uh, just to debate about any topic. So today is OC Esports, so it might be Titan X, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We can just pick any topics we want. So it can be, um, of course, constructive critique right the point is not to make drama out of uh, uh, out of air because uh, we can, all can be very good with that so the point is if you guys have something to say about the OC sport websites what you think about it you know if uh, if you're using it very often uh, what would you like to see more uh, or something changed or something fine-tuned or the the worst bug that you still wait to be fixed on the site things like this uh, that's the moment to say it you know and if you have a better solution just propose it. Um, Chuff, uh, you've been using the site for streaming mainly um, or following competitions. Um, what do you think of uh, of it as your own uh, experience? I would say. So to make things clear, I didn't compete in any competitions for for a long time now because I was focusing on commenting them. Uh, I used it, as you say, mainly for uh, streaming and commenting on what's going on. I just love the way it's much more easier than uh, than than before to find the uh, to find the scores. I just click on it. You have the uh, you have the screenshot. You can just uh, see the picture of the uh, of the of the systems and so on. Um, I love the way that it's actually um, a usable design, uh, a good design to uh, to use for the live stream. And I do expect that in the next uh, few weeks, and especially for the uh, HW World World Tour in Asia, we'll be able to have some uh, special um, stuff uh, to to be shown on the screen. And yeah, I, I love the way you can just uh, look at it and just. Uh, uh, find the new competitions. I like the design too. Uh, I know I was uh, myself first. I was not a big fan of the design at uh, at first. Uh, I thought I was a bit too uh, too big. But in the end, it's it's uh, it's much more useful um, uh, to just navigate and it's just uh, okay. Stage one, just go to stage one. I have the ranking directly there. Uh, I have the 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 few competitions there. Um, the the only drawback so far is uh, when you look at the uh, like the Rocky Rumble seventeen uh, edition for example, you have three hundred fifty you have three hundred fifty four overclickers. So if you want to see them, you have likely you have to click like more ranking, more ranking, more ranking, more ranking, more ranking <laughs> until the end to to have it. But that's not really a drawback. That's a that's a good. Uh, that's a good limitation to have so far. Uh, uh, although the systems of the, you can see the point directly on the same line and uh, and having it uh, straight away, it's it's perfect to uh, uh, to be honest. It's as as a caster, it's perfect to uh, to have it this way. And yeah, uh, I love that. I can't wait to uh, actually. I can't wait to have that on the cell phone too. So even if you cannot. Uh, you cannot just check everything live. You, you can access the website on the uh, on your cell phone, but maybe like a dedicated application just for that. I know it takes time to develop and, and code and so on, 
but you can um, maybe uh, like like to push someone to go even higher or stuff like this. Still, the OC Sport website and mobile is a bit better than I talking about. <laughs> yeah, true. But the, the user experience is a bit better. Yeah. But it is better, I think, if you have a, a phone with a quite large screen because there's quite a lot of stuff to read with the rankings. But yeah, so far I'm, I, I, I like the, the website. I know that there was a lot of uh, drama going on in the community about, uh, about this, about splitting like the, the competitive side to oc-esport.io instead of keeping everything on the Shabuli bots. Um, I, am, I like it this way. Uh, I like it this way, to be honest. It's actually much more easier to just focus on the competition when, when you're talking about something on the live or making comments or just checking what happened during the day or during the, the weeks. I do actually check every week, uh, even if I'm not all more very busy at work. And I try to check every uh, day for some of the competitions. So yeah, something I, I, I do uh, to follow up. I can't wait to do some uh, popcorn time. No, like the 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 last two hours of the competitions when everyone is submitting the last scores, uh, like uh, unless no one submits anything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did actually uh, we did uh, make a try uh, commenting on what's going on on the uh, OC Sport uh, web uh, page at the that was during the SWB uh, World Tour Europe um, on the last day, so everyone was uh, like packing and so on, and we were like. hmm, uh, so maybe at the at the, the evening before, it's like, oh, okay, let's take the website and comment on the last uh, 35 or 45 minutes of the competitions. And that was, it's just perfect. You see like the last score that got submitted and so on. So yeah, I love it. Yeah. That and the Twitter account. Uh, so actually that's the same thing. Like if you do, if you see it on the OC Sport, you can see it on the, uh, uh, I think it's HW, but uh, no, OC Sport score or HW, but OC Sport uh, Twitter handle. So we can have all the scores updated in any competitions. Uh, Dennis, do you uh, do you use it as uh, as a competitors or as uh, actually uh, uh, same as me as following the competitions going on? Um, a little of both. Um, I haven't competed in a competition on OC Esports since the the launch of the website, but I've tried to use it. You know, early on, as you mentioned, it was a little difficult to get around. It's kind of hard to find some things. Um, you know, the, the people that are on my team submitting scores for various competitions have expressed that it, you know, is different. It's a different take on how a website should be in terms of, you know, competition. And this is, you know, OC Esports. It's a new segment of the sport. So things are going to be a little bit different for a while. Um, but to your point, I, uh, you know, during the MSI MOA, we were clicking through and pulling up scores and screenshots and was able to see exactly what made a score. Um, so from that aspect, it is actually really good. It's a lot better than it was on, on hardware bot where you'd have to drill down a bit to get to the actual screenshot and find out what made the points and whatnot. But all the information is there. It's just kind of broken up a little bit differently. Yeah, actually when we used that for the, uh, for the MOA that was still in, uh, in beta, that was still not officially launched. Uh, but we're mm -hmm. still using it in, in like in in a preview state. Um, the the website launched like during CES this year, so early January, and uh, mm -hmm. since then there was like a lot of uh, bug fix and evolutions and uh, and suggestions on how you can uh, improve that. Um, I know that yep. uh, there's a lot of stuff in the back end at the EJB bot thing, uh, Timote, <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure that there, there's some uh, new stuff coming pretty pretty soon. There is, there is. Um, before I say my part, uh, Gavman, <laughs> you use the site for competition or, or how do you um, use it? A bit of both. I like what we're doing. Um, see, if, see if we're going to see the next Rising Star in, in Overclocking, you know. A lot of the old guard, as you mentioned earlier in the stream, you know, they're sort of retiring, they're sort of just not, they're not submitting anything. And so it's given other people a chance to, to jump into their footsteps if that makes sense. It's I am I am currently competing. Um it's just finding the time to get to compete really. I mean it, I'm I'm getting to that point now where I'm a lot I can bench more frequently so I'm getting into a rhythm now where I'll do work then kids bench. And, and it's it's sort of hard to find the time. But um I, I love the platform in all honesty. It's 
fantastic. Much better now. Um, the layout's much better. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, um, you know, there's a few things that need to be ironed out in it. Yeah. I think this is the. I think this, in, in the past couple of years, I think this is the best thing for overclocking as a whole that's ever happened. That's my opinion. It's it's allowing it to branch. It's allowing what what's in fact in terms of hobby to branch out like gaming was. You know, gaming esports is is huge. It's massive. It's you know, it's a multi million dollar industry. Overclocking might not be the same to some people, but I think I think with the right market and the right push and and, and stuff like this, the the community getting together, I think it will mm. it will be good. That's my take. Yeah. yeah, well, I think the feature for me that I prefer is the, the, the schedule. <laughs> and I use a lot of the, the front page thing where you can scroll through the company. Even though, the, I have to admit, the scrolling is still not perfect. It's a little bit... Uh, sometimes you, you click, you have to still re-scroll down so you can click to o actually open the competition. So I guess those are probably graphic things that can be eventually solved uh, in the near future. Um, I use a lot of the schedule to find old stuff. Uh, what would be great, I think, would be to be able to to load in the the old, old, old competition. And I was thinking actually the other day, uh, there's so many of them uh, that I, I end up using a lot of you know Control F and typing the competition on the schedule so I can find it. Because um, you know all the colors, are, yeah, sometimes it's a little bit confusing because the colors are not exactly the same than you would give to a specific brand, you know, or something like that. So um, I guess having a search function on, on that would be cool. So you could search for path competitions. That might be a cool thing to have um, eventually at some point. And um, yeah, I guess like you said, true for forecasting is pretty cool because you can quickly get to the results. Uh, I think I, I had a chat with Sophos, uh, the works at Gigabyte, about um, one thing which uh, you could do before. For instance, uh, on the on the on the game on the HDRbot side, you could quickly, you know, you had a, your competition page and could quickly swap from uh, stage one, stage two, stage three without leaving the page. You know, you had the it was just switching the ranking very quick, and that is something that takes a little bit longer right now on the LC Esports because you still have to scroll back up and select the stage, and it reloads the whole page with the new stage ranking. Um, I guess if that could be, I don't know. Uh, design some somehow else so you, that that stage selection button would be near the top of the of the ranking somewhere. I don't know graphically maybe a, the graphic designer might have to explore different options for that. But that would be actually quite cool because uh, even for YouTube doing the casting, for instance, you could uh, quickly switch you know from the rankings of all the different stages very quickly yeah. without having to reload all the page. You know, like uh, and or that could be up. <laughs> Yeah, and it could be something the site could be caching in the backgrounds or yeah. all the time, so th there's no loading time. You know, yeah, but, but all that is user load. experience, basically. You know, yeah, it's all uh, it's all experience in terms of uh, then displaying things. I think that there's already we should not display too much more because after it might get like uh, Gartman saying uh, to for the new guys to entry. You know, the the barrier is a little bit it's quite lower on the OC sports, and it makes it easier for people to probably understand. You know. Oh, it's a competition. Those are the rankings, and that's it. You, if you go to HDRbot, you have millions of things written everywhere, and uh, it might be a little bit harder to understand sometimes where things are supposed to go. Yeah. Well, HDRbot.org is more like the uh, like the the news uh, the news part. Oh, I think we uh, kind of lost them for for a second. Um, the <laughs> HDRbot.org is more like the um, like the database uh, the database yeah. part where you can have like all the details and so on. Uh, but on the uh, OC eSport website, it's actually a bit um, a bit more easier to, to find out uh, where the competition are. Uh, there was uh, obscure products on the live chat that says uh, Challenger Series is a great idea and it seems to be a success. Allows anyone to compete no matter what their budget is. Actually, I uh, do agree with that. Uh, I love the the division uh, division thing. You have uh, division one for like the. Uh, the more high end to the cell phone and very uh, very old uh, very old stuff. Uh, actually, two ship uh, two ship is the one of the guy that won the division one. Is uh, one of the French guy from the Cocotland team. Uh, he's actually uh, seventh in France, but he won the first round of uh, of this uh, pro, uh, road to pro division one challenger series. So it's actually good to uh, 
to see some of the uh, some of the guys, some uh, some people from the from Sweden, Team MLG, um, uh, one of mm. the guys from uh, 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 Team MLG in the, in the UK too. Uh, we have some people from Romania. We have some people from the US. Uh, we have a rest party that was uh, uh, competing on the very old hardware, and that was fun because that guy was at the uh, HWBot uh, World Tour North America. And he actually did won the round one of the division seven. And division seven is you have to use the like all the stuff like the uh, yeah, LGA seven seventy five, uh, GTX <coughs> two hundred series, like AG three hundred three thousand series, and so on. And it it was fun to 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 see the uh, the guys going on. Uh, don't forget, guys, if you want to have more details about all that, you can go to oc esportio and uh, you have yep. all the uh, details on there. Uh, there was a question from Obscure Product that says, hey, can you tell uh, PJ uh, Massman to add the Team Cup to the schedule? I need to know when it's on. Uh, I said it is on. No, it's uh, not the Team Cup that is on. It's not the Country started Cup. Yet. Yeah, but if you go to the, to the schedule, you can see right... Oh, I need to change the screen here. Um, if you go to the, to the schedule, you can uh, go to like the year 2015 and you have the Country Cup. The Team Cup is not yet announced, so yeah, it's not showing up on the schedule yet. Uh, I was mistaking like uh, Team Cup and Country Cup. Always mistaking these two ones. Yeah. But well. Yeah, I had one question, Dennis. What would be your mostly needed feature for the OC Sports site? Something that is totally missing, for instance. <laughs> Something that's totally missing. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure I could actually accurately uh, say that. Because, like I mentioned before, everything is available on there. It's just a matter of finding it. And, um, you know, the, for me, it's, it's always the usability of a website that kind of dictates whether or not I like it or not. And I find that I'm doing a lot of clicking on a new OC Esports website. But once you find where you need to go, it's not so bad. But, um, you know, like... You know, things like combining the rules with the stages so that you know what it is that you need to do for each stage. You know, stuff like that. But it's all there. It's just sometimes a little bit more difficult to find. Yeah, I agree for that rule uh, for the stage. It's actually a quite good point. It's true. I, I end up doing a lot of back and forth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but, you know, that was... Um, that was one of the first things that was in the design and you know you kind of have to roll with it for a little bit to know what actually works and what doesn't work and i'm kind of waiting for version two because i think that one's going to be great mm. <laughs> yes for sure yeah well it seems that the, the, the video for... things are breaking up <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yep. it says it's too long you have to close up now you have to close up uh no just um uh don't don't end up the call just uh um, cut and uh, put the video back again. Usually, it uh, just pick up like this. Um, yes. I think that's uh, gonna be all for the debate. Uh, we can do a bit more uh, debate for the next time because we're actually quite late, so like uh, an hour and uh, twenty minutes already. Um, Timote, <coughs> let's announce. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do the the drawing, oh, the draw for the uh, let's for do the, the draw for the t-shirt first. <laughs> and then the blue screen yes. and then the blue screen <laughs> contest so let's draw uh, yeah. so let's yeah. close the raffle is now closed and uh, let's draw someone from uh, that uh, to win the question was the question was how many even did uh, Timote and myself attend during the months of uh, April was it one was it two was it three was it four was it five was it six was it seven and actually, the right answer was uh, three even. The Azerbot World Tour Europe, the Asus ROG Camp in Germany, and the MSI OC Academy in Cambridge. And if I right. uh, make uh, the draw right here, and the winner is Static FX. So, you, see, you have the right answer. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, so, Ooh. you're gonna win one of these t shirts. I'm gonna uh, send you a private message <laughs> on the uh, on the on Twitch. No way, we're gonna send you a message for that. And during that time, Timote, it's all yours to announce. What can we expect yeah. from the blue screen video competitions? First, right. what is why, why, why we do we have some something? Background. Yeah, you need to <laughs> some background information about all that. Yeah, so for the guys that watched the stream at the ROG camp in Germany, uh, we had a. a 
quite a crazy amount of giveaways, which are all not yet shipped out. It's coming. Um, but um, so we had the grand prize was the GTX uh, 960. Uh, I think it's the Strix, uh, so the Asus Strix one. And um, so we had this one for grabs during the competition, and uh, you had to guess uh, the top five in the right order to win the car. Uh, thing is, uh, no one got it. <laughs> no one found out the top five. So in the end, uh, we didn't give away this card because we thought, ah, it's, it's worth more than just giving it away like we would give away a T-shirt, you know. So we decided to uh, to do a video contest based on that very famous or infamous uh, blue screen casting mojo experience thing from Triffman that you always do during the stream every time there's a blue screen somewhere in the room. And usually it's, uh, I let you make a... A demonstration well i cannot i cannot scream that far because i have some flatmates sleeping right now but every okay. time there's a blue screen i'm like and it's a blue screen <laughs> exactly like <laughs> <this>. <laughs> so so basically uh the video contest uh how it works you have to do exactly that you have to make the best blue screen casting um how you call it i don't know how you would call that like, an like expression. The, the, the special scream yeah, a special screen, yeah, or like, um, so you record that, you put that on YouTube, or you can also use uh, Instagram or Vine or whatever you want, and basically you just, uh, then you go to our Facebook uh, page, and there's a tab there which uh, says uh, Blue Screen Contest, and uh, you just submit your video, and basically you ask for all your friends to vote for your video, the top 10 videos would be qualified, uh, so would be qualified entries, and then we would have a grand jury made by uh, some of us guys actually why not we could have uh, Dennis in there and Gaffan if you want as well judging for which one is the best and most funniest video so you guys got to be a little bit creative of course eh? and um, yeah the winner gets the 960 that's exactly how it's going to work uh, how long that's gonna last so the contest is running for about two weeks um, I'm not sure if we make it three weeks um, I haven't really decided on that, but for sure, two weeks right now. So, which leaves you plenty of time to do a video and uh, share it and get people to vote for it. So, the voting is done through the um, contest interface. So, that's uh, where you're going to have to do the voting for it. So, don't forget, guys, if you want to participate in the uh, contest, you have to be a fan of Overclocking TV on Facebook, as well as following us on uh, here on the twitch.tv. And that's yeah. to make sure that uh, you actually get uh, the idea behind the blue screen things. And that you would hear next time we say it as well. So you can compare yours to ours. Actually, maybe we can make a compilation after of all the blue screens. I, I well. hope to do so and I hope to actually reuse that for some of the lives. <laughs> <laughs> so you can reuse them whenever you want. So yeah, but, uh, that's the idea of the contest. I hope you guys are going to have some fun with it. And um, if you have any questions about it, just drop us a, a message anywhere. Uh, I do actually have one question. Uh, can someone make uh, multiple submissions? Um, so technically, it's only one submission per email address. So you could technically make several submissions. I mean, like you might be creative and have four or five different possible videos. You know, it's fine. You might just be de like diluting your own voting. But if one is a, if you make a second take that is so much more funnier than the previous ones then it might be worth resharing it again i think i will uh, i will uh, make one just for fun because <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i will disqualify myself straight away but i want to at least participate in my uh, in my own as an example yeah. as the example yeah um you can do the video you can post the video either on uh, youtube instagram or vine so you just uh, feel free to uh, to submit there um if you want to follow us on youtube it's uh, youtube.com forward slash overclocking tv as well on instagram.com forward slash overclocking tv we don't have vine but maybe we can create an account there uh, for the sake of making sure everything is uh complete and everything can conquer the world about the blue screen so don't forget Watch guys be creative the the goal is to have fun <laughs> <laughs> well uh thank you Timothy, for setting that up i think it's time to wrap up the show of today uh congratulations to static fx that won the uh, outdoor terminator t-shirt in memory of our um, um 
friends uh, Trican that passed away last year and uh, we hope that uh, you guys love this show that was a bit longer than we expect we had uh, like 30 minutes more than uh, what we supposed to have but that was a lot of fun with the two guests we had uh, tonight uh, Dennis Garcia from Our Asylum thank you very much for being here I uh, always appreciate thanks, that thanks. As well yeah, as, thanks for having me. Awesome. As well as uh, Gav Bone from UK at player.net. So if you want to see these guys, you can uh, go see Dennis at hardware-asylum.com if I'm right. Yes, hardwareasylum.com. Yeah, that uh, that uh, flaming guy. And if you want to yeah. see uh, Gav Bone in the bottom of the screen, you can go to uh, player.net. But how do you write player? It's player with a three instead of an A. <laughs> So yeah. don't forget, guys, you can uh, uh, meet the, there and they are doing overclocking. They have a podcast, they have uh, videos live on Twitch. Uh, don't forget to uh, check them out. If you want to find us on uh, Twitch, uh, you can go twitch.tv forward slash overclocking TV on YouTube, as I say, uh, for youtube.com forward slash overclocking TV. And pretty much everything forward slash overclocking TV in one word, you're going to find us. Uh, thank you, Timothy, so, for being the co host of this uh, episode 8 of season 2 of the OC show. And well, thanks, Jufran, for being the click click behind the scene and everything. Great job <laughs> and, again. And this time went, went perfectly fine, except for the background of the video. So we're getting there. We're so, getting there. Um, when is the next episode of the OC show? Next week. So next week, there's going to be uh, a new episode that is recorded. And then we're going to have the live Q&A right after this one. Yeah. Usually always on the Sunday evening or Monday morning if you live in the... Uh, in the Asia timeline or Sunday evening in the US timeline. Uh, thank you guys in the audience. I uh, really appreciate the uh, the discussions we had. Uh, thank you, uh, Obscure Product, uh, the Mad Dutch Dude XOC, uh, Transmeton even that did arrive a little bit in uh, a little bit late, uh, as well as Sophos and Rebus. Thank you guys for being there. Um, we hope to see you guys in two weeks from now. And I think that's uh, one thing. One thing. We hit one million minute views on Twitch actually tonight. So thank you guys for that. Ooh. That's really appreciate. And it's one million views. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's uh, that that means a lot for us, especially for 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 Timothy and me. And uh, um, we are all part of that, and we do appreciate what uh, like the the, the, the loves we were giving us. Uh, giving us back. Thank you very much. That was Truthman, Tiala, Dennis and Gavbon signing off. Until then, don't forget, always keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. <laughs> keep pushing it. <laughs> <laughs>